John the Baptist, the precursor of Jesus who foretold his coming, was decapitated because of his disrespect towards King Herod. Despite the constant warnings which Salome, daughter of Herodias and stepdaughter of Herod, gave to John the Baptist, begging him not to denounce Herod's incestuous marriage and to accept the conditions of the king's rule, he never heeded the warnings. In the end, Herod and Herodias had him executed by decapitation. At the time of his death, Jesus was still alive. John the Baptist's head has been the most important holy relic of Christianity. It has been worshipped both by Muslims and Christians. In the great Umayyad mosque in Damascus, dating back to the 6th century after Christ, so post-Baptist one could say, mosaics of unique beauty are to be found and admired. And the relic of the head of John the Baptist is kept in this mosque for Muslims to worship at the same time as they pray to Allah. The head of John the Baptist has always been significant in several cultures of both Christian and indeed all monotheistic religions, with the exception of the Hebrews, who show no interest in relics. The demand for relics arose during the Middle Ages, when the Crusaders brought many holy relics back with them when returning to the West. So many were preserved. As so often happens when it comes to holy relics, an agreement was struck, this time between the English, who had one, the Genovese, who sold it to the English, and the Syrians, who kept one in Damascus. After discussions, they finally agreed which relic was the authentic head of the Baptist, with a very elegant and far-sighted covenant. Since two of these relics were in very good condition, they decided that one was that of the young John the Baptist. The head that I've molded represents a typical image of worship of the Baptist's head on Salome's plate, telling a hagiographic story of the saint. Salome witnessed John the Baptist's decapitation in the cell where he had been imprisoned. She took his severed head, put it on a serving tray, and went up to the banqueting hall where all the guests were eating, and where just a little earlier she had performed the Dance of the Seven Veils. She did what everyone expected of her. Acting on her mother's advice, she offered up the head of the Baptist, he who had denounced the incestuous marriage of Herod and Herodias. All the guests were appalled at her entrance carrying the head of the Baptist, except Herodias. Even, apparently, Herod himself was shocked by the evil of the two women. The mythology of all this developed into a romantic tale full of symbolism, as can be seen in the works of Oscar Wilde and many others. The story linked the fact that Salome was in love with John the Baptist and she craved his approval. So, therefore, blame attaches to Salome and not Herodias. It's worth mentioning for those who are fond of this topic that there's a very famous painting from the 1600s by Francesco Cairo, a painter from Cairo Montenote in Piedmont who worked in the north of Italy. This painting is kept in the Pinoteca in Vicenza and it depicts the image of Salome who is about to faint while holding the tray carrying the head of the Baptist. The artist was inspired by the apocryphal gospel that offers a rather disturbing and macabre detail. The tongue of the Baptist is pulled out and Salome pierces it with a needle. The needle releases a gaseous poison which makes Salome faint and nearly die.
The scene, shown in close-up, conveys all its horror and helps us grasp the strength of the story of the decapitation of John the Baptist. This in turn triggered a very strong emotional resonance, the subject of speculation in psychology, psychiatry, in studies of monomaniacal activity, sadomasochism, and in all aspects related to the idea of a head that lives without a body.